Hi everyone, it is August 7th, 2016. I wanted to do just a, a brief video, and I hope it's brief. Um, I have a tendency to talk too much, but I am limited right now because of all the things that I underwent with uh, my surgery and so forth, which I want to update you on. And I want to touch base with you guys, because I haven't for the last couple of months, actually two and a half months. So back in April, I ended up getting an infection in my mouth, the upper and lower gums, throughout my whole entire mouth. And I was working with the doctor and the dentist with antibiotics to get this infection under control because I needed surgery. And they were trying to get me in as soon as possible because the infection and the situation was so bad that what I what happened. So anyway, eventually in mid-May, I ended up having the surgeries, and it was three surgeries in one. So the time period for my healing for just the surgery alone is three months. So this is what I'm under right now. I'm coming to the close of the three-month period, and then they have to go in and do a few more other things, and then I got about another two to three months healing thereafter. So it'll be a total of six months before this whole nightmare is over with. But praise God, it was caught because um, through the infection, I ended up having some health concerns in my body because you know when you have an infection in your mouth, poison goes into your bloodstream. So I've been under undergoing some health issues. But they are getting better and things are progressing there. So if you guys can keep me in your prayers as far as my health, I would greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. So that is why I have not been uploading for a while. And also, please, if I happen to stumble and fumble on my words right now, please forgive me for that because I tend to, uh, the words don't come out right sometimes and I end up sounds like I'm drunk or something. I slur my words, but I'm not. I'm not drunk. It's just my mouth is jacked up still. So that is what's been going on, and that's why I have not uploaded for a while. I have touched base with some people via email, but I've actually kept myself quite busy with the homeless ministry and the outreach, you know, the outreach ministry too, because God has expanded that throughout this whole ordeal. God has expanded the homeless ministry. Praise the Lord! And um, I will get into that in other videos. But if I have not reached back to you via email, please know that I will. I'm catching up with a lot of things. Um, I, like I said, with the with the health issues going on, I have not felt up to par. I really haven't. I've not had low energy and a lot of things going on. So, like I said, though, that's all getting corrected. I just wish it was over with. Anyway, I want to um, share with you just briefly what the Lord has placed on my heart um, over these last couple of months, especially, I'm going to say the last six, seven weeks. And I'm going to get into that in a minute as soon as I show you a scripture. Let's go to scripture first. Let's start with uh, reading the scripture first from 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So we know, we know that we are the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwells in us, right there in front of our face. And also we know that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We know per Luke 17, Jesus says the kingdom of God is within us. Uh, Jesus went on to say that the kingdom doesn't come with observation or with drinking and eat or eating. Okay, and so forth. So, and also as we recall with Jesus, when... Um, he came upon the temple, well, actually the outer temple, when they were buying and selling, and the money changers were in there. He went in there, overturned the table, tables, chased out the money changers and those buying and selling and so forth, because what? They were defiling the then standing temple, which was the holiest of holy places at that time. People from all over the world would come to this temple for various reasons. And... Um, so Jesus, we look back and Jesus illustrates to us, you know, what defiling meant as far as back then and what it means to us today. And that is not letting anything unholy 
enter into our temple and that comes by our ears and our eyes and our thoughts and so forth we are to always be walking in the fruit of the spirit and not in the flesh now where I'm going with this is that I'm not going to mention the channel name because there's enough exposure out there regarding her and, and the ministry her ministry and so forth so I'm not going to even go there I'm pretty sure you guys even know who I'm talking about there's hundreds and hundreds of what they call exposure videos I don't even like calling it that it seems worldly um, I look at things as more as like correction and so forth I'll touch on that in a second but anyway as we saw seven about seven weeks ago massive amounts of people started coming forth and doing uh, numerous videos on this individual um, a lot of them were testimonies uh, of how they were hurt a lot of them were um, her subscribers asking her to repent for um, being an heir okay but then we had those that were coming forth which actually just basically is all they do okay it's I call it the Pharisee spirit okay the religious spirit and um, with that what I mean by the religious spirit is the mocking and the scoffing okay um, the sarcasm the insults and so forth which is not necessary at all and you can know them by the fruits that they bear when you look upon a channel and all you see is exposure videos and Tom Dick and Harry then then you know what this person's about you know what's in their spirit even they may proclaim that you know God sent them to do this God does not send anyone to solely bring out you know every single sin in a person I'm a firm believer and this is just the way I operate I know others operate differently but me myself when I see something that is an error and it just like bugs me and I lack understanding of why they're even bringing it up in the manner that they are I'll go to them privately you know I don't put them on blast I, I just have never believed in that okay I feel like you really don't get anything effective by doing such because human nature you know psychology 101 a person goes on the defense immediately when they're being attacked and when you're putting out these exposure videos you're attacking people you know you're attacking the person because what happens a bunch of people come into the comments and you got a hot mess going on and therefore also it leads to much sin because what happens gossip right um, talking about people behind their backs bringing up their past and saying a bunch of things that you wouldn't be saying typically you know if you have a problem with someone you should go to them personally now I understand with this ministry that apparently you know people were going to her and she was blocking them and she was deleting their comments whatever was going on and now you can't even you know reach her as far as her YouTube because she's disabled everything what is going on with hers between her and God now okay we are to pray for her we are to let's say it this way those that gave out the testimonies the request for repent you know to repent and so forth you leave it there you did your job what you feel God called you to do now you pray for her and you, and you let things alone you let the Holy Spirit work in her life you know I saw somewhere a couple of days ago someone said why hasn't anything happened to her why hasn't she fallen they put it that way fallen well we shouldn't look for any brother or sister to fall first and foremost we want them to come into repentance you know we're supposed to love on that brother or sister who is sinning we're not supposed to be hating and wish that they fall or that their ministry is torn down or their lives collapse I mean that's craziness the word tells us that we're supposed to be loving our enemies right we're supposed to love our enemies we're supposed to love those outside of the faith we're supposed to be those people that love we're supposed to be going out uh, spreading the gospel in love we're supposed to be shining God's love 
right? And we're supposed to be shining Christ in us. So that city on a hill, we're supposed to be shining. And we really can't do that if we have a lot of hate going on. And, and a desire to see someone fall on their face. That's not my desire for her. My desire for her is to have the Holy Spirit work in her life, uh, in her heart, convict her heart, so that she, you know, changes up some of the ways that she has gone. And that God raises her back up to continue on in the work that God has called her to do. And that's what we should pray and want for every single brother and sister out there. So my point of where I'm going with this is that not only is it this just referencing about guarding our temple against false teachings, um, money changers, and so forth, uh, false prophets, okay? But it's also against those that have that Pharisee spirit. Um, we got to be really discerning. When we see someone coming up and they're just doing this whole mocking and whole criticism and, you know, sarcasm with it, and it's not coming in the spirit of love. There's no fruit to it whatsoever. But all you're seeing is that they outright are trying to just blast them and make fun of them and so forth. Turn away from such. It's foolishness. It's, it's folly. And you don't want to fill your ears up with someone speaking like that. You want to fill yourself up with holy things. And that goes into anything in our lives. It could be friendships. It could be co-workers. It could be family. When things start to feel defiled, when we get oppressed and depressed within, that's, that's a signal for us that something is wrong. And we have to be wise ourselves, especially, let's jump back to YouTube, especially on YouTube when we're listening to all these teachers, quote unquote, out there, that are, that are bringing forth these, you know, teachings and messages, we have to make sure that they are coming in the right spirit, that they are teaching in the right spirit, before we even are going to attempt to accept their teachings. Okay, and when we accept a teaching, we're supposed to take it just as base level. And what I mean by that is that when you're listening to a teacher, and I'm going off in a little direction, but bear with me. When you're listening to a teacher and they're teaching the Word of God, what they're in essence doing is giving you their interpretation of the Word. So what you need to do with that is take, you know, what you need in your spirit, and then you therefore get into the Word of God, get into prayer, and have the Holy Spirit reveal the interpretation to you. We're not always supposed to be accepting someone else's interpretation is what I'm saying. We take it as a baseline, a foundation, and then we go into prayer ourselves and study ourselves. It's so important that we study the Word of God ourselves so that we come in to an understanding of our own. You know, when I first got saved, for instance, it's like, okay, you, I went to church um, because I wanted to be fed the Word of God. I wanted to learn. I was hungry. I was thirsty for the word, for God. So I listened to the pastor. And in the beginning, that was okay as far as like, all right, now I get it, now I get it. But as we mature and as we grow, you know, we get it more into the meat ourselves. And therefore, we take what the pastor says, we are writing notes in church, we go home, and we line it up with the scriptures ourselves, in prayer, in spirit, and then we go in with our own discernment. And we ask God to give us that discernment. And many times, you know, not many, more often, we'll find that, you know, that very same pastor is teaching incorrectly. But because they have degrees and so forth, you know, a lot of people shy back and say, oh, I don't want to say anything to the pastor. Well, there's nothing wrong with, you know, making an appointment and discussing things so that you can see where you are on your path. We're always supposed to be pressing onward, onward toward the goal in Christ Jesus. Well, what is in Christ Jesus? 
It goes back to his teachings. It goes back to the gospel. What I'm seeing a lot of is that people are coming forth and they're, they're teaching, per se, or speaking out scriptures, let's say, more of Apostle Paul than they are of Jesus Christ. They're teaching more about revelation than they are about Jesus Christ. It's like they're skipping over Jesus and getting right into, you know, let's talk about the end times. Well, why don't we get back to the meat? Because the meat is Jesus Christ. The meat is the gospel. It, what Jesus came and brought and taught is utterly beautiful, is utterly amazing. When, when you have the veil lifted from your eyes and you can see and understand those parables. Now, I know those that young in the faith are like, I don't get at all what Jesus is talking about here. Keep on seeking, keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. Seek out those teachers that are teaching about Christ. You know, I know it's hard right now, especially on YouTube, because all you see is end times, okay, or rapture. But our main focus should always be on Christ, in Christ alone, and that is what he came and taught, and the finished work of the cross. That is where our focal point should always be. Yet, we have those out there that can drag us away from that, come into our temple, drag us away from that, and get into the worldly matters. You know, oh, look at Russia, look at this, look at that. And what are we doing? We're putting our eyes on the world and not onto the word. Our eyes onto news, what's going on in the news, even alternative news. But yet, we're not concentrating on the good news. So I just want to encourage you guys to, to please, if you happen to be straying off that path, get back onto the narrow path. That is the narrow path. Is keeping our eyes focused on Christ, in Christ alone. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. So what are these teachers and preachers and so-called prophets saying? Destruction. That's all they're preaching about. Destruction is coming to America. Destruction is coming to Israel. Destruction is coming to the world. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. But narrow is the path that leads to life. That life is Christ. So get your eyes back onto him. And only him. And guard. Guard your temple. Put on the full armor of God. And take everything to prayer. Every single thing to prayer. Just because there is someone out there that's been saved 30, 40, 50 years doesn't mean that they got it all right, okay? We're all learning every single day of our lives, and we're all growing in Christ. Amen? So, I thank you all for bearing with me for the last almost 20 minutes. And like I said, I just wanted to update you, get a video out there as to where I've been and what's been going on. And also, again, to remind you, please keep me, you know, in your prayers for health reasons and so forth. And I have missed you guys. I'm going to be uploading, like I said, increments of um, Jesus' teachings. That's what's been laid on my heart, to get back into the meat. And if you'd like to join me on that, I would be thrilled for you to join me on that because that is an adventure that is completely awesome. Amen. So I love you all. Thank you for listening. God bless you.